Hello everyone, how are you? So today we're going to talk about the feature of identity. We process more than 8 billion logins per month. We will, we're going to start with a demo by Schenkel. Before we go through the story of Julia, Julia is an Argentinian citizen who wants to buy airplane tickets. She wants to travel from Buenos Aires to New York. And she's going to use an application called Gamma Air. Gamma Air is a non-existing airline, but we're going to prevent its real. And they're always on the cutting edge of technology. So they're going to be using these two technologies that we're going to talk about for some of their features. So she clicks next, continue with Pasky, and she's prompted with this other form. And in this case, once she wants to create a Pasky, the phone, in this case she's using Android, will ask her, hey, do you want to create one Pasky on your Google device using the Google Password Manager that's part of the platform. This is not part of the application's functionality. This is part of Android. And here, what's going to happen in the background when she clicks Continue is Password Manager will open up. This is a parallel of key, uh, iPhone keychain for those that are familiar with Apple devices. And she will have to use either her fingerprint or her phone pin to unlock Password Manager. Now, a key thing here is that her biometrics, her face, and, and, and her fingerprint, they never leave her device. This is just used so that she can actually enable the creation of the passkey on the local phone. And in the background, what's happening is that a passkey, which is essentially a private key and a public key that's associated to, in this case, let's say an application, is created. Um, an account will be created. These applications also do what's known as KYC. They want to know the customer, and not just that you uploaded data that looks real, but they want to know that it's real. And this is where another technology called verifiable credentials comes in. Julia will be prompted, do you want to submit all of this information? She has that credential on her phone. She has to send it over to Gamma Air. She will say yes. And Gamma Air will verify this credential. They will make sure that the credential was actually issued by, in this case, the Argentinian State Department without having to go through a convoluted process where she submits it, she takes the picture, they go through a backend check to make sure that everything works. They have trust in the credential because of cryptography and how this was submitted. But from Julia's perspective, this means that it's frictionless. Now, in the future, what we can imagine is, and this is even further ahead, a single wallet, a single application, a single pane of glass in which you have everything. You have all of your passkeys, the way in which you use to access applications, and you have all of these verifiable credentials that are issued by different parties that you can present when appropriate. All right. Well, that was a good walkthrough of how this feature might look like. Let's look at some of the, of the, of the things that might, might have happened over the past you know, decades for this to become a reality. So first off, passwords. We all have suffered passwords. We all know what they look like, you know, how they work. It's a simple solution, but clearly it came a long way, but it's, it's not scalable anymore. It's 11 billion passwords out there that were breached. There is more like 100 million phishing emails being blocked by Google every day. Dictionary attacks, brute force attacks, credential stuffing attacks. So I think we, it's time to say thank you, passwords. You, you serve your purpose, but it's time for something else now. So in 2016, this first standard came in called WebAuthn. Most of the vendors uh, adopted this, but in order to hold that private key, you had to have an external key, like maybe YubiKey. You might have seen this in the past, like these USB keys. And that's not a very, uh, it's, it's okay for enterprise users, you know, where you can hold the keys to your employees, but it's not fine for consumer use cases. So when the, this became a, um, one of the blockers for adoption, there, there was another um, iteration on these standards, and this is what the FIDO Alliance came up with, which is called PASKIS. And Google and Apple and Microsoft were the ones adopting it um, kind of right away. And the key thing here is that your phone now becomes the holder of your private key. Your phone, your laptop, whatever device you have on your, uh, that you're using, iPads, whatever. And that passkey is stored in the iCloud keychain or the Google Drive um, 
in, in the case of Android. And it's synchronized across your devices. In that way, when you are on your phone, you are the same, you have the same key that you, you will have if you are in your laptop or if you're on, on your iPad. So that's the key innovation there. And so, as Damien said, this has been today announced by Google. You can now log into your Google account using a passkey. You don't have to type your password anymore. You can use essentially a, a pass, a, a key that will be on your phone that will be unlocked with your face ID or touch ID. Some of the good properties about this is it's phishing resistant. It means that nobody can put up a website and ask you for your passkey and then use that passkey in, in some other important website. So there is no way to fish the user in this case. Uh, they are not breachable, which means that these pass keys are stored in the device, the private keys. So there is no way to st steal pass keys in the same way that you could steal passwords, right, in these breaches that happened in the past. Um, they are privacy preserving, which is also an important aspect of it. When you use, for example, login with Facebook, Facebook knows that you're logging to a certain website uh, using their account. In the case of passkeys, nobody knows which websites you're logging in except for the website themselves. And finally, the, the UX is pretty good. Like, it's the same UX you're using today, like Face ID, Touch ID, and works the same way in different devices. The second technology innovation that uh, we showed in the demo is verifiable credentials. So let's look at some of the properties about it. So the first thing is that a verifiable credential is essentially a set of attributes, a JSON, that is signed with a private key as well. In this case, Socrates University um, is signed a credential that says that Hannah is an electrical engineer, um, that she would study there throughout these dates uh, in the United States. All that information is stored in a credential that is signed which means that it's cryptographically verifiable, right? And it's a standard. So any, anyone could check that HANA actually has been issued this credential by this institution. There is an issuance process. In this case, university at some point had to issue that credential when she finished her studies. That credential we get on, your, on a wallet that you hold, it could be in the future it could be Apple Wallet, Google Wallet, or some open source wallet. When, when you want to present that credential to a website, it could be both offline or online. If it's, if it's a website, you will be presenting the credential online, and there is a verification process. Get the, the public key of the Socrates University. It will check that was signed with the private key of that, um, uh, that, that credential, and that process happens every time. So that's essentially how it works, and the properties of verifiable credentials are also um, that are privacy preserving. You can share only the information that you want to share. You, you don't have to share all the information. Um, you can share, for example, that you are more than 18 years old, but not your birth date. That's a property of this uh, standard. You can, um, it's also interoperable. It works across many devices and websites. That's the, the goal. As we adopt it, it will take time to, to get there, but that's the idea. And so today, Apple and Google, for example, are supporting one standard of digital credentials called ISO Mobile Driver License. So you will start seeing this happening more and more. Here, what are the problems? Well, there are a few, and some of them are related to the fact that this is new, but this is how it works today. For passkeys, they are ecosystem specific, meaning that if you have an iPhone, you, they will be synced across all of your iCloud devices, but if you also have a Chromebook, they won't be available there. And the same thing, of course, for Microsoft devices. You can get around this by scanning QR codes or going through kind of like a bit of a complex dance, but this is a problem. We think that in the future, we'll be able to get these passkeys to work across devices, not, not work, sorry, to be backed up across devices so that you can have a single set of passkeys for all of your application across all of your devices in a seamless manner. The other thing that's very important is that for verifiable credentials, a lot of the standards are very fast moving and not stable. It's very new technology and it's changing quickly. The standards on how to present and issue them change a lot. The, stand the recommendations on essentially 
how you should format schemas for them, what you should put in them and not. So it's a very fast moving field. That's okay, like th this happens with new technology. But there are two things that we have to take into account if these technologies are going to become mainstream. The first one is the user experience. The first time Julia saw that screen, she was scared, right? Like she saw, hey, all of these things are new. I have no idea what they mean. Should I use a passkey? Should I continue using passwords? Those are things that we have to get people used to. The same thing for verifiable credentials, right? When someone prompts me for my credential, what does that mean? Do they keep it? Do I keep it? Where is my data going to be stored and so on? So there are a number of user experience things here to be figured out. And we as builders are the ones that are empowered to do so. And on the other hand, developer experience is also going to be key. We are still dealing with security. We are still dealing with identity. We are still in dealing with private information. Even though it seems seamless to users, there are, there are very complex constructs under the covers that we have to take care of. And being able to build as developers with libraries that are secure, that are battle tested, that are built by experts is very, very important. All right. So with that, um, just saying that public keys are at full rage now. The whole PKI became now the best way to authenticate and, and to become, to create digital credentials. And this is going to be the future, luckily. Passwords should cease to exist. And that's, a very, that's very good news. And so just to recap some of the benefits of, of how this future of identity will look like, phishing resistant, better user experience, better security, and privacy preserving. We are working towards that future as an industry and as a company. And so hopefully, uh, we're, we're going to get there. If you want to try out some of the stuff that we talked about in this talk, you can scan the QR code, and you can use the experimental environment of um, OutZero, OutZero Lab. You can also join the Discord channel uh, where we are discussing all these topics, and you can follow us on Twitter at OutZero Lab. Thank you for coming, and hope you enjoy the rest of the conference and the rest of the day.